Good evening. Welcome back to another episode of Please Call Me Crazy, brought to you by Free People Radio, powered by our favorite sponsor, TireGit.com. That's TireGit.com. If you have to buy tires from somebody, you might as well buy them from us and help fund the movement, help support the movement. We believe in the freedom of movement, and that's exactly what the establishment wants to take from you now. I'm your host, Royce White, here in the belly of the beast with my trusted co-host, the great Professor Penn. Uh, this is a Hebrews edition, uh, Friday Hebrews edition of Please Call Me Crazy. Happy to have you back in the studio again. Thank you. Um, Thank we appreciate you. you being here. Um, let's get right into it. You already were on a, on a roll, so we might as well start right there. Donald Trump, the, a lot of these conservatives would rather have four more years of Joe Biden than they would Donald Trump. Uh, and continue. Well, it's uh, stunning. I was just reading a uh, post uh, in a response to something that I posted up, and the guy said, you know, we lived through four, you know, eight years of Obama and a supermajority in the Senate. We lived through it, and we lived through four years of Biden, and Biden is not nearly what Obama is. Uh, I'd rather have four more years of Biden than Trump, and he's allegedly a conservative. And I think this is great because uh, we're going to start sorting these things out. We've been in an ideological deadlock since Reagan. And I, d I did some podcasts on Reagan, and I, you know, I got pilloried for that. And I said that Reagan, who was a Democrat, he was a union leader. Uh, he was a scofflaw of the highest order. I mean, this guy was a, he was a coxman of the highest order in Hollywood. Uh, he waged a, undeclared war, you know, he probably should have gone to jail, but uh, the now famous Ali North took the fall for him, I think. If you read the history of that Iran-Contra affair, man, it's a, a complicated cast of characters. And what happened under the Reagan period? Under the Reagan period, the materialism that became possible when Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard in 72 was intensified just exponentially, and Reagan, you know, practiced that worldwide American exceptionalism mm -hmm. and military interventionism and U.S. imperialism with, you know, great support of the American people. And now we look at the um, history, and we've got the conservative movement longing for President Reagan like he's a saint. I have to tell you, I was there. The guy actually scared me. I mean, I was an adult, right? And uh, you know when you when you bet, right? You're at Vegas, right? And you go all in. You go all in. You put it all up on the bar, and you win. Hey, you're a hero. Everybody goes out afterwards and has a big steak and laughs and has a great time. This dude went all in on defeating the Soviet Union, and he won. Good bet. Okay. Now we got the same thing going on today. We're going all in that we can defeat the Soviet Union. They're not the Soviet Union. They're the Russians. They beat the Russians. The Russians beat the British in 1805, 1853, the French in 1812, the Germans in 1942. I mean, these people are tough. So we're going all in again. I have a problem with it. I think that this kind of politics that really has prevailed since Reagan, which, by the way, was a kind of a, you can just go back and look on YouTube. The black community was not very fond of President Reagan. War on drugs. War on drugs. War on the community. There's a lot of contradictions in Reagan. And uh, we've been playing out the same contradictions for 50 years. And, you know, you can only play it out so long, and the narrative starts to devolve. So I'm watching it devolve. I'm watching people say, I'd rather vote leftist than vote for Donald Trump. And they see him as a leftist. What would you think about this abortion thing that came down with Trump the last few days. Tell me which part. Well, we said it's a state's rights issue. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, in the lead up to it, he had put out a tweet, mm -hmm. and he said, I'm going to make a big announcement on abortion. And then this whole group of people, these what I would call them full conservatives, they were anticipating with fortune telling that he was about to sell out the pro-life movement. Yeah. Actually, he, all he said was, take it to the states. Let each state de decide, let the will of the people prevail within the state governance. 
Yeah. Which has been something that we don't talk about a lot since, oh, the Civil War. I said it before, I'll say it again. Much of the thin veil of Christian faith in the conservative movement is a justification to do nothing. It ends up being a justification to do nothing. That's just that that's what the 501c3 conservatism is. We're going to hang our hat on a, on an issue that we don't really believe we can move the needle on in anticipation of it not really changing the status quo because we don't want to change the status quo. And even in not changing the status quo, we get to, uh, you know, retain some uh, some level of, of moral superiority in, in high horse uh, in, in culture or politics. It's, it's just it's it's cheap. It's cheap and it's uh, it's dishonest and it, it has is, something to do with the payroll. It has something to do with who's on the well, payroll. Yeah, I mean that's part of it. Yeah, for sure, that's a big part of it. That's I mean, a big part of it. I the mean, money is always a big part well, of it. But pe- but I think it's even worse. I mean, I think when you get there's a level of guilt that you have, knowing in the boomer generation especially, there's a level of guilt that you have knowing that that we let this happen. You know, we we were responsible for this. And so some of them have a saving grace of, of uh, you know, putting their Christianity out front, and it, as as it means to go, all you other people are damned. But but we still, you know, we played into it. We were, I said it. Look, look, we are a Protestant country, and you know, it, it, Protestants are responsible for letting this con- letting Satanists take this country. That is what it is. I mean, you can't. <laughs> that's a very what. That's a very insightful comment. If I play on a basketball team and there's ten of us, okay, and okay. and and only and 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 you know, we get beat. Whose fault is it? I don't care what you say. The reason is the refs could have cheated. the 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 game could have been rigged. You know, one three point line could have been shorter than the other. The bottom line is we lost. And at the point where we figured out that we were losing, if we did believe we were cheated, then the the duty is, then the onus is upon us to. To rebel. Let me just go through right? this. I want to say this back to you because I this is a little bit new for me. We've never talked about this like, quite like this. I think what you're saying, and tell me if I've got this, you're saying the guilt of certain citizens at their inability to maintain the freedoms that they inherited. Mm-hmm. And they're selling out to forces that were really not righteous has led them to promote a kind of full religiosity so that they just feel better. And because Trump has been labeled a rapist and a racist and a fascist, he becomes a totem for them to say, oh, you're a bad guy. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, and it's not just that, it's not that it just makes them feel better. I mean, there is a, I mean, there's two different levels of, of what's going on here in the, in the physical world and the spiritual world. I mean, there is, you're not a Christian if you don't believe that there are spiritual matters much higher than political matters. I mean, that's kind of the, the heart and soul of, of the faith tradition. So, I mean, if you, if you, the, the, the point is, don't, you, you can't have, both things can't be true. You can't say that a woman's right to choose and, and abortion as a political matter is a completely spiritual matter, and then all the other politics are not spiritual matters. I mean, you know, I mean, you can't, you can't cherry pick it. Either politics is a spiritual matter or it's not. You can't pick the ones that you say are the most important. And I'm not saying there's not a hierarchy or degree of, of importance and there shouldn't be some, some, uh, you know, some, some separation of some things versus others. But again, if we go back to the military industrial complex or the general sort of spirit uh, value of life even our own lives individually as american citizens it becomes painfully obvious that the the abortion issue has has is more of a scapegoat it has become a scapegoat oh, and that's I, not a moral matter i mean that, I'm, that I'm, I'm not making a moral comment on it a spiritual or a moral comment spiritually and morally it is what it is but the idea that you can force people to love and submit to god is ridiculous especially by government fiat and the idea that you can put this issue on a pedestal and completely ignore the others. Now, if you wanted to say, hey, listen, children are the least, are the most vulnerable, children in the womb are the most vulnerable amongst us, and therefore the priority to protect them is the highest. And we want to put that issue up on a pedestal, morally and spiritually. Fine, I'm okay with that. 
but you can't totally ignore all the others. And that's what we've done. We've done that greatly. In other words, the ongoing endless war. Endless war. But it's not even just the endless war. It's, it's, but, but that's a culture of death. Well, yes, but it, yeah, it, it, it is that. I mean, that's the best example. That's the most blatant contradiction of the the, but it runs the sanctity the, of life. It, it, but it can run through the whole. But I'm, let's go even deep. Let's just go science writ large. If we want to talk Christianity, let's just talk about how science has become the mechanism to disconnect people from God and faith altogether at a at a at a macro level, right? So I mean, if you if you're going to disconnect from faith and God altogether as a macro level, if you're going to agree and consent to that culturally, you can't then come back and say, "But we're going to rest our hat on abortion." It's you know the 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 two things are interconnected. It's like saying border debt forever wars. The three are inextricably linked. The rise of technology and the convenience we get from technology is inextricably linked from the uh, inextricably linked to the rise and and normalcy of abortion, or even just looking at children like that. You know, it, it's, healthcare. Well, and, and <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a medicalized. Yeah, but per- so is gain of function. I mean, what about that? What's coming out in the last week? You know, and they're saying that. That now it's it's you know they're going back to 2018 and they're bringing up the the guy uh, Doctor Ralph Barrick and uh, no uh, G- Jazask or what what was his name Drastic Drastic uh, yeah uh, yeah yeah that's right yeah he, yeah Peter Dasik Peter Dasik yeah, yeah and they're bringing up video of him saying clearly my colleagues in China are working on a a strain of of SARS coronavirus that 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 modifies the spike protein where the where the virus attaches to the cells I mean he's saying it. He's saying that they knew that there was gain of function research taking place in China. He didn't really say Wuhan, but he said China. And I don't even think that's uh, a, a, a mystery, a, a, you know, debatable at this point. But it still is in the mainstream media. So again, you know, and and the, what's what's scary about that is I think people really view gain of function research as a uh, that's a good soundbite. It's not even about women. They're just using women per the conversation. Right. But I don't even think people see gain of function research as a sub, you know, a, a, a sort of sub component of the military industrial complex and, and, you know, R and D and, you know, uh, research and, and, and education and, you know, higher learning. I don't think people even see it as connected. So, I mean, it's not, I'm not even blaming people who just go to church on Sunday, they get one issue that's up on the bulletin board and they want to hang their hat on a simple issue. I'm really not blaming them. But that doesn't make you any more, that, that doesn't excuse the blind, the blind spot that is there. I mean, you can have blind spots from lack of information or lack of insight, a lack of a big picture, but that doesn't mean it's not there, right? And that, that's what we got to get down to now. Do our leaders have those blind spots? Do they see those blind spots? Are they able to speak to policy and lead in a way that, that accounts for those blind spots and changes it? And that's why they reject Donald Trump. And, and that's what I'm saying is they, it's much easier for them to continue on with this 501c3 scam. Uh, of, and it's the Catholic Church, too. I mean, the Catholic Church has a 501c3 status, too. Um, but, they, but we're not a Catholic country. We're just not. We're not a Catholic country. We're a Protestant country. And although the Catholic Church has many ills, don't get me wrong, the 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 difference between the Catholic Church, in my opinion, and the and the Protestant uh, community is for all of its corruption, the Catholic Church has thousands and thousands upon homeless shelters and hospitals and and, and uh, you know, all kinds of genuine charitable organizations that can be debated. Now, you could debate what the motive is. Maybe you're saying it's all a front, but people do go to those hospitals and get services. Homeless people do show up to those food shelters and, and, and have a hot meal. And, and so, the, the, but the, the, the Protestant community doesn't have that. It, it's the, the footprint's nowhere near the same. There's a lot of super pastors stuffing money in their pockets. And there's people in the Vatican stuffing rubies in their pockets. I get that. But but the 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 five hundred one c three thing has become somewhat of a racket, uh, and and ter- I mean and look at what's happened to it. I mean you can look at these Protestant churches and these pastors getting right up before the altar and saying that you know the LGBTQ agenda is fine. It's like okay, so I mean, 
on one end, you're saying we're going to go by the law of Scripture here with this one issue. But over here, we're going to play fast and loose. That's just not, I mean, it's not Christianity. That's a good point. But, you know, like every other institution or cultural scene, it evolves. Mm -hmm. And that the level of the evolution is dependent on many factors, one of which is the reliance on the participants in the culture and ritual that binds them to a past. So just by being a protester, you've weakened that bind to the past. Mm. So there's not the kind of timelessness in the Protestant movement that maybe exists in the Catholic Church, which goes back to the way back. Well, to, according the root, the root is a lot shallower. Is what I'm trying to for say. For sure, for sure. You know, I agree. Yeah, and the, but there's a lot of and see, and this is what ends up happening. And I said the other day on my podcast, I would love to see a, the the rift between the Catholic and Protestant community healed. And I think in healing that rift, we could start to really clarify some of these fundamental issues and and get rid of these scapegoats. And and, and again, the, the it's like we can't even in a Christian sense, we can't even bring ourselves to see how the border and the debt and the forever wars are the root of the problem. We go to the LGBTQ, we go to the abortion, and we go to, in, in many cases, we go to crime and policing. Those are three issues. Those are the three issues that the left plays, and those are the three issues that we feed off of. And I see the ping pong back and forth. And that is the highest level of controlled opposition. It's the propaganda. And it's not like those aren't important issues. No, they are important. Well, That's an important issue. But, but, but. But disembodied from the... Yeah, well, they're not even comparable. I'm going to be honest. See, because you got to work from the bottom up, right? I mean, you can't skip to the end. See, those, those cultural wedge issues are downstream. And if you don't realize that... Diversionary. If you don't... They're just downstream. They're, they're not cause... At, they're, they're, they're not cause their effect. You know, the, the, the cause is, like we say, the heresies is a scientific method. This, this lie about democracy. We didn't bring democracy all over the world. Give me a fucking break. We didn't bring democracy. We brought economic imperialism. You know, we, we brought uh, a sort of, we brought globalism to another level, to another technological level. That's all we brought to the Philippines, to the South China Sea. We didn't bring them democracy. We're holding them at the, the tip of, I mean, we, we held Japan down and, and we spanked their ass. That's what we did. We didn't convince them that democracy is better. We, we, we threatened them. That's a really important. The same way God wouldn't want to threaten you or is not trying to force you or convince you to love Oh, this is level. really deep. Now we're getting into some deep waters because what we're talking about is free will. Right. And if the, Versus tyranny. If the post-World War II Democrat liberal order was so good. People would so, embrace it. If they'd embrace Yeah, why, <laughs> why is half the world fighting it? Yeah. I mean, but this really, is, and it's not a, it's not a, that is not a, an indictment of the idea of democracy on face value, but it is to say the same way people rejected Christ. It's not, a, it, it's, it's a faulty assumption to assume that if you have a good idea that's to the benefit and well being of men and women, fallen, the fallen, that if you have a, a, an idea that is to the, to their benefit, they'll accept it because it's to their benefit. That's a capitalism propaganda. That the markets and and if you have a product that's good enough, if you have a story that's good enough, if you have a a system that's good enough, people will opt in because it's to their benefit. That's a scientific. That's a part of that heresy of the scientific method. When you really get down to the root, it's like, well, of course, people will do what's in their best interest. Really, really? No, I actually think animals usually do what's in their best interest. Humans have this unique, this unique consciousness to choose self destruction. Even when it's obvious, we saw today. I mean, look at today. There, you know, in, in in our neighborhood over here in Minnetonka, you know, I get a call and there's a shooting that's broken out in the neighborhood. A lot of kids are home from uh, from school in the Minnetonka school district, the Hopkins school district, because of Eid, the the Muslim holiday or the Somali holiday. I'm not sure which one, but um, you know, a man's obviously opened fire on on police officers with what looks what what sounds and appears to be some. So I'm saying people choose self destruction, right? I mean, you know, so just to say, oh, well, well, you know, everybody's going to choose democracy because it just works. But the arrogance of it, the arrogance of it is astounding, you know, and, you know, again, we but but that's not to indict democracy. You know, you're going so quick over some of the biggest issues like the arrogance of it. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, we could just talk about that for just a little bit, okay? Yeah. Because that really, we're getting down to some root causes now yeah. about the arrogance of our belief in our own intellect. Yeah. We have decided. Right, ego. Culturally. We're smarter than God. There is no God. That's right. 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 There's democracy. There's science. There's computers. And there's artificial and intelligence. Every, every invention is a benefit. Four heresies of the West. And we're just going to keep moving along. And as long as we can stay in power or feel like we're in power, that's another, that's another propaganda we got going here. What is power? You know, if Satan can convince you that power is being able to force the next person to do what you tell them to do or want them to do, is that really power? I mean, not in a spiritual sense. That's, that's no power. That's nothing. Yeah, that's overriding. That's nothing in, in, in reality. Power is consent, con consent of the governed. Yeah. That's power. Yeah, that's real power. Real power. Yeah. The idea is so good, I want to participate. Christ, that's power. Well. Right. I mean, to, go to, to, to have a, a message and a sacrifice so profound that, that even if you don't believe the story to be factually true, the archetype of it, is, is, it, it resonates so, so deep. The first Matrix movie. And it spread to the whole world. The first Matrix movie is just the story of uh, Christ. They're all biblical. I mean, I don't care what sci-fi little, you know, nerd spin you want to put on it. They're all biblical. I mean, look at Star Wars. Luke Skywalker, my father, Darth Vader. I mean, give me a, I mean, it's, it's, it's all biblical. It all, it's all the same archetype, right? I mean, the, the Bible is the first mass published book. So, and again, I, I don't want to go off that tangent, but I, I do want to say again that, yes, these three culture wedge issues, women's rights, the LGBTQ, identity, let's just broaden it, because now it's not even about sex. Now it's about totally uh, asexual uh, species identity, right? I mean, there, it's just, it's just a, one of those little psyops to keep expanding a, a, a demographic of people into infinity. That's what it is. It's just expanding the, the, the status, the, the corrupt center. They're just going to expand the center out. It's a smart strategy. It's like identify as whatever you want. If you identify as whatever you want, even if it's regular, you're still in the group because other people want to tell you how to identify. Okay, those three issues, women, time's up, me too, right to choose, identity, LGBTQ, sexuality, Black Lives Matter, the history of oppression and slavery. Those are their three issues. Those are the three issues we play on. I'm trying to go way away from those issues because those issues are downstream. Do you have boundaries as a government, as individuals? Do you live in perpetual debt? And do you want war and violence and conflict uh, uh, you know, on end? That, I mean, these are way... You know what's interesting? We got a lot important. of people in this country that consensually want to participate in the endless war the debt, yeah. yeah, and of course, if you have the endless war and you have a military that has no borders, why even talk about a border? Borders a scam, there. It's for sure. Yeah. Why do we talk about a derivative symptom? I mean, we're all focusing on this open border, and I think we have U.S. military in 178 countries. So I, I put that up, I post that up, and somebody says, dummy, we've got embassies. We have to have the Marines protecting the embassies. I thought to myself, okay, it's a good answer. It's not a good answer. But what about the fifty six thousand? But it's, not a, it's not a good answer. I mean that that's the, that, it's 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 a rejoinder. Okay, yeah, it's, it's, a it's it's not it's not that's a, one of those cucky uh, cuckservative answers. That's one of those neocon cuckservative answers. We got embassies and we have to have marines at the embassies. Yeah, fifty thousand of them. We don't have to have we don't have to have embassies. What about how about that, cuckservative motherfucker? See, I, I hate little I hate little fucking you know little flippant, little uh, knee-jerk responses, like you think you said something profound. We'll go a layer deeper than that. What the fuck do we need embassies for? If you want to travel to another country with your United States passport and you get caught over in fucking Fallujah or in the middle of a, a firing, a shootout between the, 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 the Kurds and the whoever or the, the, the you know. The Kurds and the Turks. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, the Kurds and the Turks or, or the Chinese and, and uh, the Indians in Kashmir. If you want to go fucking mountain climb, you know, in Nepal for your own, you know, for your own spiritual benefit. Because, you, you know, you're a Judeo-Buddhist, <laughs> right? And you got your GoPro <laughs> oh, and funny. you got your phone on a stick 
and you need all your little Instagram followers to see how much of a world traveler you are, fuck you. And our taxpaying dollars going to the embassies to, to, to have janitors who can sweep the floors on the off chance you get caught in some shit you should have never been in anyway. Ungrateful. I, no, I'm serious. Go back to base ideas. We don't have to talk about abortion. Just talk about basic gratitude. You can't have citizenship and a strong nation without gratitude. You got no fucking gratitude. All you people want to be world travelers, you know? Is, you know, and they'll go, oh, well, you know, God made it possible for us to travel and he helped us invent the airplanes and, and you know, men should have the freedom to go wherever they want. You have freedom of movement, but, but the freedom of movement is an argument about government and the relationship between government and citizens, not the boundary citizens put on themselves of how they live their life. And if, if you want to go to that level, let's go to food production, processing, manufacturing, industrialization of food. You had to grow your own food. You didn't have fucking time to travel to Nepal, you know, for some spiritual, uh, 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 what do they call it, uh, psilocybin, uh, you know, uh, psychotropic, uh, you know, uh, cult. You didn't have time for that shit. Because if, if you weren't on schedule, tilling the land, Starved. you die. Yeah, and the Nepalians, uh, what, is that what they call the people from Nepal? The Nepalesians? Nepalese. The Nepalese, yeah, the Nepalese weren't going to feed you. Because they got to fucking farm their own food. They just as soon kill you. You know, so we've just created this whole kind of theater. And it's, it, it's hard to even, you know, have any morals or ethics in it. Because it's all based on convenience. And that's the story of Christ. Is, that's why it's so profound. Because everybody knows deep down, choosing what is hard is always going to bear more fruit spiritually and morally than choosing what is easy. That's the Christ story. He chose the hardest road possible. We all want to choose the easiest road possible. Your democracy is easier. We'll just take a mass vote. Even the way that juries work. Oh, well, if 12 people say you did it, you did it. Get the fuck out of here. That's just me. You just want to make it easy on yourself. The whole scam, the rule of law, the rule of law. Yeah, we got 100 people in the Senate, a couple hundred in the Congress. If they all take a yay, nay vote, must be good. Fuck you people. Hey, you just don't want to do the hard work, and you're going to pay for it. Because the, the, where that turns into is then you got Dr. Fauci's and, and, and Peter Dasik Dasch, Dasch and all these people in the room. They're making decisions for you all the time. You, but those ones you don't see about. You don't hear. You never even hear those ones. It's almost as if the ones we hear about are a cover story. The ones you hear about. Yeah, C-SPAN's a cover story. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? The illusion of choice. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You know, so I mean, I'm not being a, a what is it, pessimist or, you know, doom and gloom. This can be corrected. Corrected in the neighborhood. It could be corrected nationwide overnight when you got yeah, leaders. It's corrected by individual citizens. Yeah, but, but first, I mean, you do have leaders. You need leaders. You have both. But stop fighting the fucking leaders. You know, the people who show up, at least if you're going to be a conservative jerk off, at least. Can that was a good come around, I got to say. That was an awesome come around. That was great. That was a long introduction to continue. That was fantastic. I mean, just let the leaders lead. If you're going to be a secondhand jerk off, at least pick some real pipe hitters that you, you know, abnegate your, 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 you know, thought process to, you know, you know, you're, you follow some people who are at least willing to shake stuff up. You know, if, if I'm going to be a jerk off, like I hear people say all the time, well, I'm not really, I'm not really into politics. I, I don't really vote. I don't trust it. You know, politics is a scam, which in many ways is true. But if you're going to just sit back and not be involved in the process, at least throw your support behind somebody who's not going to toe the line. That's the least you could fucking do. Right? I think what you're saying is great because uh, my, uh, I, you know, I listen to these, what you'd call conservatives. I try not, you know, I'm, I'm of that cohort, so I try not to put these people in the dirt. You know, you're young. You can just look at them and say, fuck off. It's kind of cute. I try to talk to these people, and they're really focused on the alleged crimes of Donald Trump. Which are? It seems to be sexual. A lot of sexual crimes, right? He of had, course. He had an affair on Melania, right, when he had the little baby in there, you know, in the picture. and He did the Stormy Daniels thing and the hush money thing, and he called up in uh, Georgia and said, can you find me 12,000 votes, which you can interpret that any way you want to. Yeah. But the, the thing that's If in, there are votes there that were... Yeah, c- 
can you come up with some real votes, you know? Yeah. Maybe damp down or, some- or you just say, if there were some votes there that were misplaced or miscounted, can you find them? Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, jail. Anyhow, the point is not, this is the old, uh, and, I, you know, I think about the conservatives when I say this. I think it was a barrier that said, uh, show me the man and I'll show you the crime. And it's really not about these issues. It's the threat. This is Donald Trump's genius. And this, I don't know if he does this on purpose or if he's just the wrecking ball of the post-World War II Democrat liberal order because the mm. first thing he wrecked, and, man, he wrecked it. Now, and I, and I've, you know, I think most of the listeners know and viewers know, I've been to China a lot. I know a lot about China. And I went there. I've been involved with those folks since 1993, and I do respect a lot of them. I really, truly do. They're hardworking and a lot of good people. But when they smile at me, they weren't really smiling. Like when I smile at you, I really mean it. They didn't really mean it. And what Trump did was he said, oh, you're smiling at me? Watch me rip your face off. Zap. And then they turned into maniacs just instantaneously. He revealed the whole scam of U.S.-China relations in, you know, a summertime. And everybody all of a sudden realized, hey, these folks are not really our friends. And that was a big problem in the business community because, of course, there's a lot of people making a lot of money on that, on that trade. Mm. And now the same thing has happened in the conservative movement. What he's, what he's done is he's revealed the contradictions inherent in this left-right conservative liberal lens that we've been looking at politics through since Johnson. Yeah. I mean, this has been going on a long damn time. It didn't go on right after World War II because we had a great social solidarity to get through that war. You know, Eisenhower, when he ran for president in 52, he could have run as a Democrat or Republican, and he actually thought about running for both parties. So he ran as a Republican, and I see these people on X. I'm an Eisenhower Republican. Well, what is that? I mean, it's like the center of the status quo, because what does he represent? The military. He was the military, and we loved him because he won. He got the kudos for the defeat of the Axis powers. General Eisenhower. Nobody talks about the Russians or the Chinese. Their sacrifices didn't matter. This goes to our self-image as Americans. We believe, because of course our PhDs wrote the history, that we solely, I mean, I know there's people listening to me right now that think that the United States defeated Nazism and Imperial Japan by them. We did it ourselves. Well, we didn't. I'd say we much, we, we I'd say we had much more to do with the defeat of Japan than we did Germany. You know, actually, there's a good argument for that, but I'll tell you what really helped us defeat Japan. The Japanese invaded China in the, in the 30s, and they knew that they didn't have the resources or the population to achieve their goals of world domination, and they actually believed that they needed to saddle up the Chinese as the inventory to help them achieve their worldwide goals. They were going to uh, use them. Right. Use the Chinese population. Saddle them up. Slavery. Right. Mm-hmm. And you know the Chi- and they thought the Chinese were just going to give in because they called China the sick man of Asia and the Chinese had been beatered, battered and beaten for a couple hundred years because of colonialism. They were a colonized country. They didn't have any social solidarity and they had a, a civil war going on between what you might call the whatevers and the communists. And the Chinese, the Chinese were really not marshalling a great um, national. They, they national didn't have, a, they didn't have any nationalism. Mm-hmm. The Japanese thought they'll just, and they thought they were all Asians, and they'll submit, and it'll be Asians against the world. But they were going to be, and the Chinese resisted them. And I don't know how many Chinese died off the top of my hand, but I think China suffered more casualties in World War II than any other country, Mm. more than the Russians. Mm. So the Chinese did actually uh, present a challenge to the Chinese, uh, to the Japanese, that was unanticipated, and I think it helped quite a bit in the resolution of that conflict. But the the Eisenhower period, when he ran in 52, after that war, 
the social solidarity was fantastic. I mean, I'm looking at Robert Reich, you know, posting up public policy, you, you know, Democrat stalwart, communist. The tax rate on the wealthiest was 90% coming out of World War II. So the sacrifices were widely shared. And uh, it broke down over time. And we separated into two camps, which is, you know, natural, normal. And, but we've had this contradiction now of what is a conservative. I mean, that's the question. Doesn't exist. Well, that's the question we need to clarify. Ain't no question. There are no conservatives. Go ahead. For our conservative listeners that write There in, are only nationalists and globalists. Okay. That's it. And all this, you know, cons- all this uh, MAGA light, uh, nationalist light, just to, it's just fodder for the, for the canon of the status quo. They just really don't want to cop to who they are, is what you're saying. Look at them. Look who the intellectuals are of the conservative movement. David yeah. Frum. Uh, um, Bill uh, Crystal. Um, Carl Rove. Uh, Mark Levin. Mark Levin. That's a perfect example. Ben absolutely. Shapiro. Yeah, absolutely. Another good example. Great example. Um, Liz Collins. She's not a thought leader, but a, a rising I mean, star. Lo- locally. A rising star. Yeah. Oh, can I tell a story? Okay. I have a story. Go ahead. I have a story. And I, look, I'm, look, I'm, I'm going to be honest here. I don't hate Liz Collins. I, I, I have no real personal problem with Liz Collins. It's not even about Liz. It's what she represents. And it's, I don't even think it's her fault. See, and then I get to this level, because look, I come from, who am I to say, right? I'm not going to just sit here and, and, and bang a hammer over, over these cucksertives' head, because the, the black bourgeoisie is just as bad, if not worse, in my opinion, because I'm a black man. So the black bourgeoisie is the most detestable group in the entire universe to me. That's just my opinion. Uh, the, uh, the talking heads, I have the Whoopi own. Goldbergs Wait of the world. Second. I have my own axe to grind in this area. The anti-Jews. Yes. Yeah, we all got them. We all got them in our own, in our own camp. Um, but, we, all, we all have our own cleanup responsibility. Yeah, we do. Absolutely. That's why we're a great team here on Hebrews. Yeah. You take care of the black community, yeah. and I'll work on the anti-Jews. You yeah. work on the black bourgeoisie. I I'm, like that. I'm working on everybody because I got a little bit of everything. But the uh, the black bourgeoisie are the worst. The Whoopi Goldbergs of the world. I saw Dr. Phil slap them down about the pandemic um, in a clip over the weekend. And, and I went on Dr. Phil's show when I was going through my thing with the NBA, and he was a... He was a cool guy. I, I, I liked him. I want to try and get him on the podcast. But anyway, um, the Whoopi Goldbergs of the world, you know, it's not just her. I mean, she's just an example of that kind of black talking head that that supports Barack Obama and the entire Democrat platform as though it's gospel. You know, you're talking about sister act, you know. I mean, once you were singing, you were singing gospel songs and, and, and then you're supporting a guy who is as anti-Christian as it possibly gets. You know, at least in in his in his policy and and what he oh no supported. his words he he actually said something I'll never forget he actually said that our salvation is found in the group in the collective in the collective I mean come on communism I mean this is as antichrist as you can go it throws the whole gospel on its head oh man so I I don't mean to get down on the the Liz Cobb I said that because it's not really about Liz. And I, I, I feel she's ju- got a market. I feel just as bad for Liz, though. I, 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 my contempt grows, but also my uh, my uh, sympathy grows at the same time. It's a market. She's got she's, a market. She's, she's no, marketing. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Is she's brainwashed too? Yeah, that's we, true. We we assume. Well, you know, I I tend to say either you're ignorant to it or you're in on it. And that 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 assumes that these people are not that the brainwashing isn't as it's good as it is. Of, it's the lack of strategy. That's really what it is. I mean, when you get to this level, talking about Liz Collin, and I've said this so many times, because, you know, I'm an officer in the party, you're mm-hmm. a candidate, and, you know, we're working for certain things to take place so that we can actually move the needle here in Minnesota. And you get these people, and I know they're well-meaning. They really believe, and, you know, it's not my for my place to comment right now. They believe what they believe about the death of George Floyd, and they believe it was a scam the way that Chauvin was put away. Right. They, they do. They believe it. I mean, they truly believe it. And they believe that in in um, revealing that contradiction, they're actually quite radical, that they're fighting the power. What they don't see is they're actually just supporting the power. They've been co-opted 
because what they're doing is they're preventing the movement of the people to a new kind of political reality. They're actually reinforcing the status quo by criticizing what happened. And they don't get it. And I see this in, in strategy all the time. I mean, the, the quote-unquote conservatives or whatever, the globalists or whoever these people are, because let's leave them no labels. In fact, there's a group called No Labels. They have no strategy. I mean, that's the interesting thing, because I'm into it deep enough now that I'm actually thinking about the strategy. Yeah, they're hovering around like drones. You ever remember that? You remember that scene in The Matrix? Uh, when when the uh, when the Sentinels break through Zion, yeah, and they're just about to get to 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 Zion. This was in the third movie. This and was they in hang the revolution. Up at the top there. And they and they just circle and yeah. they're hanging in yeah. like autopilot mode. Yeah, yeah, that's the good majority of Americans on both sides of the aisle. They're just hanging up there, floating around the toilet bowl. <laughs> you know, like 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 no, for real, like light pieces of shit waiting to be flushed. That's what it is. <laughs> but the problem is, we need real strategy now. I mean, and we're going to have to talk through strategy. I mean, I have, I had this convention this past weekend, Mm -hmm. and uh, you were there. Yeah. You made an appearance. Yes, I did. Okay. Because you came to make a presentation as uh, a senatorial candidate here in Minnesota looking to uh, share your ideas with the delegates. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, first of all, uh, we had 39 delegates for 39 spots. And uh, to say that I'm accepted in the party or that I'm a party stalwart is like a joke. These people hate me. But I voted with the party stalwarts because what they wanted to do was just have a vote for the 39 people by acclamation because there's no reason to adjudicate it. There's 39 spots and there's 39 candidates. They're all going to get approved no matter how long or how much time we put into it. Mm-hmm. And I voted for, okay, let's just up and down, let's get it done, let's get people moving along, move on to other political issues. And I was really attacked by that by a close friend of ours, and I, and I, I thought about what he had to say. Brother Tom, mm-hmm. I understand where he's coming from. He wanted every one of those people to stand up and tell everybody who they were. Yeah. And I've thought about what he said. He was I, right. I, he was right. He was right. He was right. But yeah. you know what I wanted to get I wasn't going to tell you that yesterday, but he was right. But you know what I wanted to get to, because mm-hmm. there's only so much time? I wanted to get to the slate of resolutions. There's not only so much time. That's the first scam. Well, no. The first, the first. Because people get up and leave. And no, no, no. That's the problem. But no, no, stop, stop. Mm -hmm. Had I not been on the rules committee, Mm -hmm. which I was, one of the real slick dudes that we know who it is, Mm -hmm. we can call him out if you want to, tried to run into the rules committee that resolutions would pass with a 25% of the delegate body vote. Democracy. 25%. Twenty five percent. Yeah, that, that would be called yeah. the, the slippery the, slope of democracy. <laughs> really, let's make it one person. Divine right of kings. Guy thinks he's so smart too. Oh, it was just terrible. Yeah, yeah. And I just demanded we're not going to do that because what happens is people leave. And had that been allowed to pass, I wanted to get because I looked at these resolutions mm-hmm. and I said, "Where'd these resolutions come from?" Oh, well, the guy that was supposed to work on it, he didn't do his job. These were so bad, these resolutions, Mm -hmm. one of which was, of course, to change the Minnesota GOP platform to allow for abortion in the party. And uh, that was a big big problem. They tried to pass this by acclamation. We argued about these resolutions for uh, quite a long time. So, yes, Tom was right, but we might still be sitting in there talking about this stuff. And what we had was 50% of the people were brand new. And I wanted to, you know, try to bring them into a process that, you know, felt like it had some integrity. Well, of course it didn't. It devolved into a bunch of fighting because the party's quite div- divided. The thing that, two things pissed me off about that convention. Mm. I don't think I told you about this. Your opponent, Joe Frazier, showed up. Mm-hmm. Joe Frazier's 26 years military intelligence. G.I. Joe. You know, I like that. That's good. G.I. G. Joe Frazier. That's good. That's very... Very quick. I like that. He's been branded G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. Mm-hmm. And he showed up, and he was asked to go up to the lectern where everybody else had went, and he decided to stand right behind me and scream in my ear for five minutes. And it really pissed me off. Mm. Because what he did was he modeled for a room full of people, 300 people, a kind of military organization and drill sergeant-like 
presentation of self in everyday life. Now, for me, I spent a lot of time with these kind of folks. It doesn't impress me. It really pissed me off. But, you know, interestingly, the crowd kind of liked it because they, 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 the, the uh, full organization. In the of, absence of a leader, people listen to anybody who steps up to the microphone. And just can talk with some emphasis. It mm -hmm. really bothered me. That was one. The other thing that really got to me, and I, I talked uh, about this on my podcast, and I want to do it again because this guy I want to trash. I want to trash Alex Blackish. I want to yeah. trash him because, number one, he's a national committee man, and we got to get control of the Republican Party. Dan Schultz sat right in here with us and talked about he can't guarantee that if we get control of the Republican Party, the Republican be saved. But he did say, in his opinion, that if the American Firsters don't get control of the Republican Party, it's over. And I don't know if that's true or false, but it sounds damn good, doesn't it? Sounds great. I, I, I would venture to say it's uh, it's in the right ballpark. We need a beachhead from which we can rally and, and yeah. move forward. Politics is by representation. And, so. you know, we have a national uh, uh, organization called the Republican National Committee. But these people, oh, wait, the, before you go on, these people don't believe that. These people don't believe that the Republican Party is a, uh, is a rally point. These people don't believe that politics can save the republic. The 501c3 Christians that still vote Republican, that, that are the conservative Christian, uh, uh, you know, demographic of the, of the voter base, they really don't believe that what they're doing is going to save anything. What are they, they're looking for the comeback for Jesus Christ? Yeah, that's right. Thing? Absolutely. 100%. Great. You know, there's a little, there's a little thing in uh, the root of this whole tradition, it's called Judaism, and there's a concept called tikkun olam. And here's what the concept is. God intentionally left the world unfinished. because He's the master. If he wanted to finish it, then nobody would have any choice, right? right? So he left freedom of choice, free will. And we get to choose what we create on this planet. And what have we created? Hell. Great. Good work. Good work, fellow citizens. Good work, assholes. <laughs> <laughs> conservatives nice work and you know alex stood up there and i respect alex i mean as a person I, i'm not against him as a person but politically he represents this group that we're talking about right? military industrial complex military you know worldwide empire mm -hmm. so he, he got to project strength the same guy that tried to pass through this 25 percent voting thing was running the av and he would had a little deal with alex and we went up they ran the top gun song and put up a picture of an F-4 Phantom that Alex flew 50 years ago in the 70s. The top, they played the Top Gun song? Played the Top Gun thing as he walked up there. They and played the Top Gun song at he, the... Yes, they did. And Alex put on his naval aviator jacket from 1974, and he stood up there, and that was all cool. I mean, you know... That's not were, cool. He wants to do it. That's his you know, thing. What I'm it? saying is it's not... What did I tell you We before? object to it, you and I. No, but no, there are no, other people no, that no, don't no. object to it. No, what I'm telling you is it's not cool corny not for that group of then people. then that's the problem well that might be the problem no that is but the biggest you, problem but what did you tell me when we started the hanging? biggest no the biggest problem that is the that is the problem when we started hanging around together <laughs> many years ago now when royce and i first started becoming friends royce said to me one of the biggest problem with the conservative movement is not cool. it's not cool. it's unnecessarily uncool that's what i'm that's what i'm really trying to get at it being uncool look the alice pleckishes they probably really believe they're cool well, but the people, but wait. the people, but the people who control the propaganda and the narrative around the Republican Party and they're the conservative cool. movement—they're not cool. No, no, no. They—they they know that he's not cool to a broader demographic of people. That's controlled opposition. Exactly. That's the point. They know. They know he's not cool. That's the point. Yeah. They but, know what's really cool. But he stood up there. He came up with his flight jacket on, and you know, Alex. Hey, you know what? You earned this from me, because number one, Alex called me and asked me not to support Trump long before the process started. Oh, because there great. was a very consistent and coordinated effort in Minnesota to trash the Trump movement, which has had, got nothing to do with Trump. It's about the nationalist movement. They really, the whole hierarchy of the party is united in anti-nationalism. Mm. From Tom Emmer to Michelle Fishback to Stauber to Finstad to... Hand, all of them. All of them. They're all globalists. They're all lockstep. Or locks, exactly. They're all in lockstep. 
And I, you know, I, maybe he didn't know who I was or maybe he thought he could turn me. I don't know. I try to be respectful to everybody. I was not insulted that he asked me, but my answer was, why would I take a position? The campaign hasn't even started yet. I was just saying, don't bother me with this because we're not even into the campaign season. But, you know, we had many, we were sitting, remember we were sitting together? What did he come up and say to us that we were? Uh, uh, mutant. Mutineers. Mutineers. We were mutineers. You look like a bunch of mutineers. Yeah. And we were just sitting there as American yeah, citizens. Fuck you, little cuck motherfucker. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I, don't have to, I don't have to salute you. Sorry. The black, the black community, we don't feel that sim, same sense of, of dying loyalty to the, to the people who serve this country. Not, no disrespect, because there's black people who have served the country. But no, no disrespect. We we don't have that. No, nah, you know what? I get it. We don't have that sacred cow thing going on. I get it, but I do. On. The man served. I don't get. Look, he's been in twenty five years in politics. Served too. No, that's another issue. He has done some selfless things in his life. Ah, stop, stop, stop. You can look at the results and go back and infer the motive. <laughs> There's a lot of people that go look. Getting down on this now, aren't There's you? a lot of people that go into the military for money. There's a lot of people that go into the military because of their own uh, issues with self-doubt and 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 confidence. Or or some people just like the like you say. Some people like the work. Some people like the killing. Some people are, are killers, and that's why when Donald Trump, when they asked Donald Trump, "Don't you think Putin's a killer?" and Donald Trump's response was was epic. It was iconic. It was legendary. There are a lot of killers out there. A lot of people think we're killers too, and there are a lot of killers here. Stone cold killers, straight up, bona fide serial killers. These people are demented, twisted, sociopaths, out of control. And, and even if they just need a, you know, even if they get a little contact, a they don't even them, need to do the killing directly. A lot they just of, want to be associated with it. That's lot, really that's that's kinky. And that's we, weird. And when we go to these Republican Party events, Tom Emmer will show up, sprinkle his pixie dust on everybody, and say. Mm -hmm. If you're a veteran or active duty, stand up. And a fifth to a quarter of the room stand up. So is there any wonder why we're in an endless war? What's more cuck what but see, what's more cuck what's more cuckery in this country than how they promote and propagandize our veterans and then how they treat them, how they take care of them. I want to get to my story. Okay. Because that's exactly where I'm heading. There with we this. go. So I got an email from Alex many months ago, but after October 7th, and he said, I'm going with an RNC delegation to Israel as a follow-up to the massacre on October 7th. Mm -hmm. Would you send me some money to go? If I had the money, I wouldn't have sent it. Because being Jewish, I'm thinking, why are these guys going to Israel? I mean, these people are in a war. So I realize there's people in the Israeli military and politics that are more than happy to fuck up the minds of some Americans because that's what they do. They're, th those people are in a money grab. They need support from the United States. So they'll, they'll be nice about it. But why would I want to go there? I mean, you're going into a war zone, right? Why would you do that? I mean, you got some, some reason for doing it. So they went. I didn't support it, and he went, and it was cool. And he came back to make a report. I heard his report. But he went up at that convention. This really pissed me off. And, uh, you know, Alex, hey, you earned this from me. And I'm not saying I'm right or I'm wrong. I don't know. I can only tell you how I, I felt. Now, and I'm speaking as a man who lost a lot of family members to butchery based on anti-Semitism. I mean, a lot. People I know. And he went up there and he told the story and he had slides and he went and talking about it. And all of a sudden he starts crying about the Jews that died on October 7th. And I don't know for sure, and I don't want to act like I know for sure. So please, don't take it for sure. But it struck me as deeply disingenuous. Like, I want to be a national committee man, so I'm going to wrap my candidacy in the cloth of Jewish blood. And that legitimizes me. Man, that pissed me off to the extent that I'm coming out this far. Because you know I don't like to do this. Mm -hmm. But... This kind of thing of wrapping, we were just talking about this. This is why I went on this. This is the 501c3. Let's wrap this military-industrial complex, the endless war and the debt, in the cloth of faith. And this is the problem. This is not right because there's nothing religious or holy or sanct 
about a culture that has given itself over to the scientific method and the coercion of a military and financial manipulation to advance imperialism throughout the world. There's nothing really. Well, oh, death it, and death. Well, this is just mm -hmm. a, this is just the British business model revisited, you know, a little bit more sophisticated because the technology is better. And when, when people stand up in my convention in my district and wrap themselves in that kind of scam, in my opinion, because it was not, it was, stand up and tell us what you think. Are you supporting President Trump, or were you supporting Nikki Haley, who came here to Minnesota, brought in by these folks? Who do you support? What do you believe about the party? What are you going to do support, to bring in? He supports the propaganda of Israel being the linchpin and justification for military industrial complex. That's correct. That's what he supports. And the Jews are getting used now. Oh, yeah. And it's getting very apparent. And they're going to hang them out to and, dry. And it's running thin, isn't are it? Are they going to hang them? Well, who said it for? I told you. The first night we talked. I told the you. The first night we talked. And very soon they're going to hang the Jews out to dry. And you know what? And it's coming now. That was it? remarkably prophetic. Although President Biden made some very strong demands on Netanyahu to take care of the citizens of Gaza. Humanitarian efforts must be made. And you know, the Jews ran out the next day and everything Biden asked for, bang, it was done. Like it was uh, prepackaged, preplanned. And somebody asked Biden a couple days ago, are you thinking about giving up your support to Israel because of the genocide in Gaza? Are you kidding, man? So... They've green led the thing. And, and, for anybody that was a Barack Obama fan, mm -hmm. Barack Obama in 2016 signed a 10 year foreign aid agreement with Israel. You know, Barack Obama, the leftist, the anti war leftist, you know, Mr. Drive By. You know, also, this, also call him the first Jewish president, though. He was, he I was, thought he was the first gay president. No, he was deemed by the Jewish community that the, the, the 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 prominent the prominent Jewish publications. I didn't hear that at one. the time. I'm not reading the right books, am I? They they gave <laughs> him the being the first Jewish president. And you know why he did it is because he signed a 10 year, 35 billion dollar foreign aid agreement with Israel, mm -hmm. and every year 3.5 billion dollars of military hardware is given to Israel. They don't buy it, they get it. And in fact, this trip this year. They're giving them 25 F-35, the most modern fighter jets that we have. That is the dope. This is the stuff that gets the job done. They're giving them 20. They're just giving it to them. 25, 25, 25 F-35s. Right. Even the Turks can't get it. And turn, up, turn up the Top Gun music. Let the Top Gun and music blast. What are they going to do with those jets? Bomb Iran. Bomb, 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 bomb. Yeah, right? that's what they're going to do. Well, it seems that way, doesn't it? Yeah. It's or maybe not. Look, I don't, you know, look, and, you know, this, even this part of the propaganda kind of pulls us into their wheelhouse. I don't even like it. Now, I'm just like, you know, I think the whole war thing's a scam. The whole war. All of it. From, from India and China and the Kashmir to the heartland with Ukraine, Russia, Israel, Iran, I think the whole thing's a scam. Let's assume it's a scam. Let's we as until the, it's not. Let's we until they prove otherwise. I mean, nobody's well, really cracked off. If you're uh, a Ukrainian living in Kharkiv, it's not a scam. There are parts of the world right now where right. the war is real, as real as it gets. They, they've let slip the dogs away. No, I'm talking about the propaganda of who's behind what. That's what I'm talking about. I, you're I'm, saying there's more solidarity amongst the leadership than we're led to believe. Elitism, global elitism. What the fuck is Vladimir Putin saying? You know, everybody's on, you know, it's, you, you can sell, you can sell, you can sell the Yankees in, versus the Red Sox to any Tom, Dick, and Harry. You can't sell that shit to nobody who grew up on Dale and, and, and Iglehart. You can't sell this, you know, Red Sox versus Yankees, uh, you know, political, the global political theater to anybody who grew up in Rondo. I'm just not going for it. I, I just, I'm not, you know, Vladimir Putin, no, he's, a, you know, he, he He's is he's doing. Why would Vladimir Putin be asking to join NATO? What kind of what kind of what kind of play is that? Why are the two Russia Russia Russia? What are we talking about? Why are, are talking? The, why are the two governments still cooperating in the International Space Station? Right. I mean, there we talked about this. Right. That that doesn't get a lot of play, does it? None. Right Zero. now, 
Right now, there are Russian cosmonauts and American astronauts. I wonder what they talk about. I mean, come on. The view. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Tune in Sonny Hostin for me, please. I want to watch this. That's... God, that's just hilarious. I know you didn't mean that view. No, I didn't mean that, but I that's funny, it. too. The first thing I thought about when you started laughing was Sonny Austin. So we're the Hebrews. Get out of the way. I want to watch, you know? <laughs> but that's just hilarious that they're up there. Yeah. And the two governments really are allegedly, which goes to show you, which we said earlier, what we're seeing is not what is. We're right. seeing what we're supposed to see. We're seeing what we're supposed to see. Okay, so the all- question is that the only question that really remains here is how how unified is the shadow government of powerful people, decision makers who are putting on the theater, or is it that these puppet politicians who are out there in front actually are involved in the inner sanctum of making these decisions to put on the theater? That's what we can't really tell. We can't tell if Joe Biden is 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 a useful idiot, if he's a running dog, or if he's a pu- puppet master, or if he's got a play. He might have a play. You know, there. we so that that's what that's the only thing that's left to be revealed here. And of course, that's changing all the time. Right, right. I mean, we know who some of the players are because we can tell by the way things move. But even at that level, when you know, I look at our our media and our memes and things in the conservative movement, and it's always like um, Klaus Schwab, George Soros, Bill Gates. We need to start thinking about who the real decision makers are, who the real players, because there's no, the, the real players of the, you know, there's the question is, do you hide in plain sight or do you remain unseen? We Uns- don't know. Unseen. If at, at that level, I'm going to stay on, I'm going to remain unseen. Unseen. You know, you know, and you'll have a John Gotti, right? Who, who wants to make a, a, a more public spectacle of the thing. But the best guys in the, in the mob were always better left. They always remained unseen. Right. And so I don't think of it any different with a worldwide crime syndicate, a worldwide political, you know, criminal uh, organization. The best guys still remain unseen. You know, I just don't buy it. Taiwan, think of China and Taiwan. If China invades Taiwan, it'll be the second country on the Security Council that that invades another uh, country unprovoked, unprovoked. I say that in air quotes. Uh, unprovoked in the in, in within a decade, the United Nations then is defunct by its very own charter. That what did you call it? The insecurity. This the insecurity council. If China invades, first of all, we started it when we invaded Iraq, and that's what makes the whole thing seem like a theater to me. We knew what we were doing. I mean, we knew that wasn't right. Hey, we practiced in Grenada first. You, you see what I'm saying? Right. I mean, what are we talking about here? So, and, and my point, you know, I don't know if Alex Plekis really believes, he probably really believes. I don't know if he, he, I'm not so convinced Liz Collins doesn't really believe what she's saying. Oh no, I they, just don't think they're oh, that no. smart. Oh, I no, think they, they're they, daft. These people do believe. Okay, well that's and different that, though. But, it's different whether you're ignorant or in on it. Depends on where you are in the pecking order. But the point is this, the podcasts, the community, the talking one to another, the having the courage to talk to your neighbors, your friends, your family, your coworkers. This is how we spread out. Here's a truth for everybody. The whole political process is a cover story. We have no idea who's running the deal. We know $2 trillion of weapons is missing. That That's a pretty good that's indicator. That's a tell, isn't it? That's, that's a, a really t- good tell. That's a tell. It's not like the, sh- the shit got stolen. Yeah. It, well, it got stolen, but it got redeployed. I mean, it's somewhere. It didn't just poof. Although when you go down to Mexico... I hear from my Mexican friends, the cartels are very well armed these days. Very well armed. The cartel. The cartels, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. They got stinger missiles and the whole thing. These people are, you know, because they got the money, right? Who are the cartels? That's another thing that we have a problem with here in the United States. Yeah. We uh, think that the Mexicans are so corrupt. You know, when corruption is accepted as not corrupt, or oh, you're really corrupt. I mean, all that money from all that drugs, I mean, just think about all those all those state governments all over the country and all that money. But again, you know, this is this is the moral this is what they call moral hazard. This is cultural moral hazard, not 
economic moral hazard. Well, it's cultural for sure. But and it, you know, part of it is a uh, byproduct of actual economic moral hazard of the Fed. But that's another that's stringing it a little that's bit. That's gone all the way down to that. Okay, but you just a cultural moral hazard. It's materialism. My if, point is, we, you know, who are we to tell the Mexicans that they can't that they can uh, uh, rise economically as a country? Uh, on the back of ill-gotten gains. We came up from opium and sugar. We came up from slavery. slavery. Yeah. Piracy. But opium. I mean, let's just keep it drugs. We came up with, you know, for, from opium. In fact, the Roosevelt clan, the Kennedy clan. The, the whole Ivy League is opium money. All of them. And they, and they stand, they're all prestigious, and everybody wants to get a graduate certificate from an opium university. Harvard, Yale. Uh, the but, University you know, of Opium, I like that. No, they were all founded with opium hey, can money. Can I tell you something? You, you, right? All I know is, is when I went to the Ivy League in 1976, there was <laughs> there a lot of drugs there. <laughs> you know, I walked in my, uh, I was one of the unlucky freshmen. Hmm. Unlucky. I thought it was lucky, but it was unlucky. They ran out of roommates for me, so they put me in with two juniors. I walked in, we were in a quad. It's two, two freshmen and two juniors. And uh, I walked in, and uh, I don't want to say the guy's name, but uh, there was a bale of marijuana. There was like a bale, like 15 pounds of dope, like it just came off the boat on his bed. Whoa, what's that? You know, and I'd never seen anything like that before. Anyhow, they were dealing drugs all up and down the East Coast. Prominent people. People at that time were nobodies now. They're on CNN as commentators. They were drug dealers. They were. I mean, I'm not going to go that far as to help these people. But you know what I'm talking about, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we just can't go that far. Yeah. I can't. Look, you know, I'm not even making a moral claim against people selling drugs just writ large. You know, if you come from my, a, my, a, <laughs> this is not people that need to sell drugs. There's another the, thing. The, the, who's, the who's needs to and who doesn't needs to is a. That's not a, um, nobody needs to. That's not the point. No, if you're going to starve to death, no, these people. No, mm -mm. I'm not giving you a pass if you're going to starve to death. That, that's, that's a moral, moral imperative. Yeah, that moral relativity is a slip. That's the whole slippery slope. Okay, it's cause, great. Right, because we, we say if we don't bomb Iran, they're going to bomb us. Fine. If we don't kill them, they kill fine. us. Right. Fine. That, it's not even about it. But you do set a precedent with legislation and law. And when you let Pfizer, I hate that when you get a clean shot at me like that. I hate that. When you let Pfizer, <laughs> when you let Pfizer and the rest of the pharmaceutical industry sell drugs that are completely unregulated, and when I say completely unregulated, I mean that the regulation is a sort of a fugazi in itself. You know these double-blind uh, placebo controls, and you know whoever has the most money to put up the the tests so that you know we we can say that there were these clinical trials double blind clinical trials when really we know it's very reviewed papers it's just money it's money so you know it it offends me and and Reagan knew this and see that's another thing under Reagan's hat uh, that he has to that he has to you know hold is the rise of the pharmaceutical industry you mean the uh, removal of uh, liability absolutely the removal of liability. And, you know, they're just... So you can tell you, you do a war on drugs in a black community, you remove the liability from the pharmaceutical industry, and you get the cuck to go, hey, hey, you're protecting us from these jungle, what they call them, jungle uh, bunnies, or him and, and Nixon were on the uh, the call laughing with each other, talking about the people in Africa who are so uh, uncivilized, they don't even wear shoes. Yeah, these monkeys. Jesus didn't wear shoes. I'm sure, there were plenty of times Jesus went and walked in the garden with his bare feet, right? I mean, these people are Christians, though. There's nothing wrong with being barefoot. There's nothing wrong with being barefoot. I mean, we the whole thing is is just... Well, it's all part of that scientific method. Yeah, yeah. It's the superiority of the arrogance of the intellect. I'm not saying you didn't, you didn't, you didn't walk and get a rusty nail in your, in your foot, you know, and, <laughs> and die from... <laughs> and die from a tetanus. You know, I'm I'm not but what I'm saying is when Jesus walked, there were no rusty nails. Uh, there were no rusty nails laying around. I mean, they weren't plentiful. But now you can't walk down a street. You had to keep the inventory just for crucifixion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a that's a great rim shot.
Jesus joke. People uh, aren't going to like that. I didn't mean to be disrespectful. But, but the inventory. I get what you're saying. Right. No, it it's, was, it's it's serious though. There was no broken bottles laying on the and ground. And we act like that, you know, we act like it was a fairy tale, like we were so far removed you know why from the way was, we lived then and the way we live you know now. Why it was no, only two thousand years ago. You know why there was no broken bottles or nails on the ground? It's because people had a little bit more mindfulness. They were not so materially warped. Right, right. They took care of their kit right. because it, it was not unlimited. It wasn't I'm going back to Walmart. Well, and you'd recycle the stuff. You'd use the stuff. You wouldn't just throw the stuff away anyway. You might need it. For a lifetime. Yeah, metal. You're not going to piece out. You can you probably had a bag of rusted, broken. And, of course, what the progressive movement tells us is that we're doing way better now. It's way better. Yeah. Everything's better. Yeah. That's the miracle of science. Well, and they're, they're shooting themselves in the foot, but they run the controlled opposition so they think they can survive it because what is most obvious, most obvious of all of these things, is that the inflation is reaching critical critical level? It they announced inflation numbers today was way higher than what they thought. The the inflation is going to be the herald of black people's exodus from the Democrat Party. I it, I, I hear is, it. Every, isn't that interesting? I hear it every day. No, I'm hearing it more and more. Black people coming up to me saying, "Hey, you're running a, for you're running for office, huh? Republican?" And it's, uh, uh, man, tch, the inflation. They're saying it, the, the groceries, everything's too cost too much. We got problems. So the economic thing, the radical materialism is, is holding true. My only thing is I, I think that they're going to try and, I really think they're going to try and cheat. I know how they're going to do it. Okay. There's a um, great play they got. Because what they say, what's the number though, before you go, what's the number Three and of? Three and a half percent was the inflation rate. No, no, no. What's the number of black people that would need to leave the Democrat Party and vote Republican for the election to be swung? It was really small, like 30% or something. Like 30%. Yeah. 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 Well, Biden's got a trick up his sleeve. Now, I'm not here to be... I really don't like when these pundits make predictions, so I don't say this as a prediction. I'm just identifying a uh, skullduggerous opportunity mm -hmm. that exists that I'm aware of that most people aren't aware of. Um, so I want to share it with you. Those of you that will remember back uh, during the Trump administration, one wonderful summer, President Trump and uh, President Xi got into a one-upmanship on a series of, I'm tariffing $50 billion, 10%, and Xi became back. I'm going to do yours 10%. I'm going to do another $100 billion, 10%. Xi said, I'm going to give you 100, 10%. And then Trump went, 25%. And Xi said, I'm out. Of, I'm out. I'm out. And then Trump just for effect said, you know what, we're doing the whole thing 25%. So there was four tranches of duties, right? they were tariffs, border taxes, on some $600 billion of Chinese imports every year. And Trump did this, and uh, he's recognized now because he says if he gets back in, it's going to be 100%. Mm -hmm. what, you remember what I said? Remember what? Right, 5% every quarter. 50% on, on right away, 5% every quarter. But what they've done now is the Walmarts and the, you know, the Costcos and the Amazons, they've sued in the federal court system and said that tranche three and tranche four of those 25% taxes were illegal. And from what I know, they were illegal. So there's a case now in the Circuit Court of Appeals I just watched Janet Yellen talk about removing those tariffs on CNN a couple, C, uh, CNBC a couple days ago. They could remove that 25% tax in lead up to the election, and it would seem to people. Like the inflation's coming down. No, gone. Mm -hmm. We go negative inflation because it's immediate. It's like we're taking the 25% off today. Tomorrow, everything goes down 25% at the border. So because, we, but but at the expense, yes, at no, the expense no. of American manufacturing, American at jobs, at the expense of this, the national security of our supply chains. That's correct. Right. And then, then if they really want to go whole hog on this thing, tranche three and tranche four, they could say, oh, all those taxes that were collected at the border, illegal, we're giving it back, three trillion dollars. They could put three trillion dollars into the economy. And they could blame it all on Trump. They could say, Trump, it's Trump's fault. It was illegal. We have to give the money back. Trump ruined the economy. We have to get so they could get rid of the inflation for the short term, like a like a fake, like a Fugazi 
Band-Aid, mm-hmm. and then dump trillions into the economy as a stimulus, and Biden could be elected in a landslide. So they do have countermeasures for people recognizing that this inflation's out of control. They have a countermeasure. Great. They do. I'm just telling you, they do. Fantastic. I know that this is kind of our... Well, of course. I mean, I'm not saying that that's going to be the be-all, end-all, because the reality is when you're printing money, you can always... What's another $3 trillion? Oh, we're doing a trillion dollars. Was it a trillion dollars every 100 days? Every 100 days. I I mean, let's cut it to 30. We'll do it in 30 days. Well, that's what happened in the Weimar Republic before the Marx failed, and we ended up with uh, Hitler, Mm -hmm. because we're we're walking the same road. You know, Erdogan in Turkey has been in power for over 20 years. The inflation rate there is going around 100%. The people finally said, very similar, we love you, but you know what? We're voting for the other guy because this inflation's killing us. Yeah. So we got two groups on either side of the football that are pretty knowledgeable and engaged, and we're fighting with each other like wizards, kind of like in Star Wars with the, the Force. The Force is coming out of our hands. We're just working on these people that, but then there's the 80% in the middle. They just want to, you know, go home and whatever. But when they go to that grocery store, hard to BS those people because now we, we're, we're getting on to the real deal, right? Yeah. So you have a good, but there's a countermeasure. Countermeasure. Well, there's always a countermeasure. The, the, well, this one, this one's extreme. The, the only thing that's going to save the Republic is if... The only thing that's going to save the republic is if we um, if we go back to the fundamental ideas, these basic ideas. It's like, do you want to be free or not? Some people don't really want to be free. Some, most, most. Yeah, that's most. the that's the issue. They just don't know how bad tyranny can be. Well, they they don't care. Tyranny only affects the people who go outside the lines of the tyrannical. So if most people are inside those lines. Most people want, they crave tyranny. Please. Makes it easy. Well, that's kind of like the 501c3 Christian thing. That's right. They have a certain moral superiority because, you know, Professor Penn, I'm a rule breaker. I mean, this is, for my generation, I, you know, I look at these people, I go, whoa, you folks have knuckled under. I'm not, and I'm going to say this, I think, every time. Like, I see these people, they're playing the, January 6 tapes on X. We're going to play this every day till the election. I'm going to say this, I think, every time. Start carrying cash. Get rid of your credit cards. Mm. Stop pointing and clicking. Gum up their system. Act free. Mm. I mean, just be free. The I think, my personally, this is, this is my personal strategy. I don't know if it's going to work for anybody else. It's going to work for me. I'm growing my own food. I'm going to not depend on the system as much as I can. That's it. I mean, if we all just develop our own self-sufficiency and independence, they'll be sitting there with their system. What What do you think about what What do you think about um, Israel Iran? That That heated up and fizzled out real quick, didn't it? I don't know if it fizzled out. It's too soon to say. It's too, the 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 Ayatollah, he put his turban back on, told his girlfriend to go back in the bedroom, and he came out and he threatened Israel just last night. Oh, okay. So we don't really know, but but the response is getting a little far from the act, almost as if nothing's going to happen. And if nothing happens, nothing's going to happen. And if nothing happens, that kind of lets us all know what's happening. What's happening? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> what it is. What it is. Okay. Right. What it is. <laughs> what it is is. <laughs> it's a fugazi, <laughs> you know, because you would think that they would get down. What are they waiting on? I said it before. I said it when the book. I said it back when October when 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 the Israel was first attacked by Hamas. I said what? Well, what are they waiting on? You think they're waiting on some opportune time? You can't. Two things can't be true. You can't say these people are extreme radical ideologues who are driven by a perverted, uh, uh, you know, religiosity. warped religiosity. And at the same time, they're waiting on the perfect moment. Right. And the, the two don't go together. Right. Radicalism doesn't work like that. Right. It, it's it's sporadic. It's it's irrational. It's and the Israelis they they evacuated some of their big cities. Yeah, they well, thought yeah. they thought the shit was going to go down. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I but can't tell. If they don't, if this doesn't go down, we know it's a scam. 
once and for all. This That's, is as close as Israel and Iran has been to war in my lifetime. Right. Open warfare. Right. Yeah, so if they don't go this time. They're not ever going to go. Especially with Russia, you know, sailing those Russian battleship cruisers Ira- into Rush- the, the Rush- Red Sea. Russia and Iran have a mutual defense pact. Right. So if Israel attacks Iran, Russia should come to Iran's defense. If it doesn't go down, it's not going down. And I hope it doesn't go down. You know, if, you know, for the sake of the, the human lives and the and the uh, and the destruction, I hope it doesn't go down. But if it doesn't go down, we know there's a scam going. Look, and I said it on my podcast the other day, how can a country that openly says their policy is death to America, death to the West, ever receive a single dollar from the American government? They just got six or seven billion. How can a country that says their policy is death to America, death to Israel, death to the West? How can a country who says that publicly ever receive a single dollar from America? You know those dollars? They were real dollars, right? They had big pallet loads of cash. Ca- you know that cash? It's just paper. So give them some paper. Psh, maybe we reached that point. And and that's that's the heart of what what we say when we mean America first. I mean we can we can talk about abortion, we can talk about the LGBTQ, we can talk about Black Lives Matter being a racial race baiting scam and, and culture war, and that's all of those things can be true. But the real heart of the scam is that we, as we the people, allow our government and these puppet politicians who represent special interest groups to give money to countries that hate us that hate us, and then tell us. They have to take more money to defend us from those people. I, I'm going to give you a blast. I think everybody hates the United States. Even our friends hate us because we're enforcing a Pax Americana through coercion. And if you cross the line. We kill you. Well, we at least threaten to kill you, you know. We sanction you. Whatever it is, you know, there's no great consensus about the righteousness of our cause. That's what the American citizens need to really that's a good theme for today to get, you know, to start to wrap up is that if we were so good and so true, wouldn't everybody just, why do we have to enforce this through manipulation and coercion and threats? I don't know about that. Huh? I don't know about that. What do you mean? I don't, I don't, I don't know if there is a, a, there's, as, as a Christian, there's no more truthfulness and genuineness and good for you than Christ. And people reject that and don't like that and won't take that, accept that. They didn't do it then. They still don't do it now, a lot of people. So I'm not sold that if 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 we were so good, uh, people would, would fall in line. They wouldn't need to be forced. I don't think we should force them as a principle. But I don't think that the, the, the line of thought that if we were good and righteous, people would accept well, think, it. Think how, think how what, a, what a wonderful world we're talking about. The same people that have rejected faith are now rejecting materialism from the king of the materialists. So what you going to stand on? You know? Tyranny. Well, okay. They want tyranny. I think people want, I think deep down people are craving tyranny. Because it ab- abnegates all their personal I think the, responsibility. I think the personal responsibility and guilt that comes with choice and, and the, the resent and self-doubt and the anxiety that comes with choice is really starting to wane on human civilization. Well, the Chinese say that all the time. You all have too much freedom over there. No, they say that all the time. <laughs> they believe. They, they act like that, don't they? Oh, they do. Yeah. Nobody breaks any rules over there. Yeah. They all know what the rules are. One rule over there. Get rich. I don't say that to say that we shouldn't have free. Cho- we shouldn't have freedom. I believe in freedom as a as a concept. Uh, you know, as a framework, as the right framework. Well, I'm just saying ha- people don't like it well, deep if, down. They they don't. They they're starting to reject the basic idea. Well, of freedom. then they're missing the relationship between freedom and human well being. Right. They right. think their well being comes from a well being checkup and some pharmaceuticals that they buy down at the you know. Well, and that, that is drugstore. A, that is a devolve. That is a. Uh, that is a destruction of uh, of what materialism does to you too, right? I mean, because if you don't want freedom, if you don't see how freedom impacts your well being, you just you're just living in the whatever outcome there is of the day, right? I just want to survive the day. I mean, it's the most sort of you know, it it's just defeatist. It, it makes you a dog. It, it really defeatist. It makes you an animal. 
it, it lacks that human consciousness that understands what freedom, you know, what, what, what it, what's worth dying for. Yeah, or living for, for right. that matter. That's I mean, it's correct. just, you know, they're just, you know, uh, can I survive today? Can I say, it's like a dog, you know? I, I mean, honestly, a dog just thinks like, <clears throat> seriously, I don't mean to be rude or disrespectful, but I mean, have some pride in, 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 in your own humanity. Well, but they, it's hard for them to have pride because they don't have the gratitude that God has graced human beings with consciousness. We think, I, I, you know. I, you what, remove that God concept, it does kind of go downhill in a hurry, doesn't it? It goes downhill fast. I mean, think, think about it. I was watching the other day about space and uh, this concept of the Big Bang Theory and, and, and whatnot. And uh, there was one thing I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my mind around. How people believe that you could go from dust to consciousness now now listen if, if you have you read your darwin if you <laughs> want to tell me if you want to tell me that we went from dust to little microorganisms you know which is already a stretch i mean how how organisms lived in the vast vacuum of space come on neil degrasse tyson please sit down and and, and let me let let me hear it uh I, i'm happy to sit down and listen I'm probably going to end up saying "fuck you, fuck off," but I, I, you know, I'll take I'll take a gander, right? Let me let me see what you got. Um, but okay, even if even if that okay, you went from little tiny microorganisms, atoms, neutrons, and protons. You end up at little microorganisms, whatever whatever you say, and you end up at a tadpole, and then the tadpole ends up being a dinosaur. Okay, okay, then the dinosaurs end up being birds and chickens, and you got eggs, and okay, fine. And eventually you got monkeys and some, you know, the, the raptor ends up becoming an, an upright, uh, uh, you know, gorilla that ends up becoming the Neanderthal. Okay, fine. Fine. I'm, uh, okay. I don't believe you motherfuckers, but okay. But getting all the way to consciousness, oof, that's, that's, like, a, that's like a triple quantum leap right there. I mean, consciousness, to say that you could arrive at animals is already a quantum leap. But that you could arrive at consciousness. But you know they're putting consciousness on all the animals now to kind of make a link. We're we're anthropomorph anthropomorphizing. Oh, the animals are have are human. Oh, they're just dope. So we're going to start identifying as animals, and we're going to start identifying animals as being human. That's correct. It's been another episode of Please Call Me Crazy, <laughs> brought to you by Free People Radio, powered by our favorite sponsor, TireGit.com. TireGit.com. Uh. Got to buy your tires from someone. You might as well buy them from us. I'm stumped by the <laughs> by, by the, the, sheer. This, the sheer stupidity of of modern science. You're speechless. Speechless. Um, Just remember, on the other end of that transaction, somebody's getting paid. Someone's getting paid. We're believing a story, and somebody's getting paid. Follow the money. Got to follow the money. Follow the money. I hope you enjoyed the creature from Jekyll Island on Monday night. Um, the radio show five Make nights sure, a week, yeah, five man. nights a week. Come on, you're stupefied when that when your brain hit that yeah. reality. <laughs> That's it. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> there's there's no out. We're just done. This podcast is over. <laughs> have a good have a good weekend, everyone. <laughs> Godspeed.